Me and my friend Chris were chilling in my room. Chris was watching TV and his phone was lying beside me. He calls me with this very weird nickname, so I wanted to see what my name was in his phone. He was too distracted by the TV, so I decided to give him a call through my phone. I sat on the other side of the bed, far from him, and gave him a call. That's when something weird happened. My phone was ringing, waiting for him to receive the call. Suddenly, he picked up. His phone was literally in my hand, showing his usual lock screen. He was sitting right beside me, eyes glued to the TV. I put the phone to my ear and said, Hello? I got an answer back, saying, Hey, what's up? It sounded exactly like him. I went blank for a second. He said, You there? I looked beside me to see Chris watching TV, unbothered. I asked on the phone, who are you? He said, Chris, you high or something? I didn't know what to say, so I said, what's the time and date? He said 30th of January, 4.30 p.m. You okay? I froze. It was the exact time and date as now. I was so paranoid that I cut the call. I called over to Chris who was sitting beside me and told him everything. He just laughed it out and thought I was making it all up. To prove to him, I told him to check the call records. To my surprise, there was no call record in either of our phones. I have no idea what happened that day, but it still just haunts me. To start off with a bit of backstory, as it seems ridiculous to claim a driver would deliberately speed into someone without it. When I was still in school, far too many years ago, I lived in a small town just outside a pretty major UK airport. Most of the people in the town worked at the airport, and there were two main routes out. One went past my school on the outskirts of town, and one went all the way around the back and included a diversion onto the local motorway. Hence most people took the route past my school as it was more direct, and without it being school time rush hour, faster. Sadly, my school had a problem with hit and runs, as many drivers, despite the crossings in traffic calming measures, were unable to accept that they would be slowed down by teenagers crossing the road to school. That was a particular issue with drivers that like to slow down, then speeding up when you step out to cross, then slamming the brakes to stop inches away from people, or on a few occasions, not slowing down at all. The actual incident I was crossing the road into school one day. Normally, I took the bus, which dropped you on school grounds. But I was dropped off by my mom that morning, as she had to go into my sister's primary school, so she could just drop me on the way and save me an extra half hour of sleep. She didn't drop me at my school, though. She left me at the primary school, and I walked over. I was crossing the road and remember seeing a silver car. I'm pretty sure it was a Peugeot, but I'm not sure on the model. Approaching the crossing and started to do the previous mentioned, pretend to stop, speed up, stop maneuver, but without the final stop part. That's where I have no memory, just the stepping out from the curb with the approaching car and nothing. There's no chance it didn't hit me, as it couldn't have slowed down in time, and I remember being well aware of this fact, but not being able to get out of the way. If you've ever been hit by a car, or in a similar type of incident, 
that feeling just before it hits you is a moment you don't forget. The next thing I know, I was some way up the road. Probably lost about 10 seconds of memory, maybe a little more. And I was walking mid-conversation with another girl from school who I know went there and saw around, but had never spoken to. She was slightly younger than me, so we had never really crossed paths. This was an established conversation, and when I came to, I stopped and was pretty confused. But she thought I was being really weird, and maintained we'd been chatting and walking for a while. School day went as normal, but when I got home, I spoke to my mom about it, and I was still kind of freaked out. She was totally chill about it. She was the type to overreact, so this was strange in itself. She just said my dead great-grandma had probably saved me, and not to stress over it. Still, to this day, I have no idea what happened, and I believe it was some sort of glitch. There's no other way. Nothing pushed me out of the way of the vehicle, and the way I just jumped into a somewhat abnormal situation, like the universe, just had to cobble something together to make it plausible, that I would never normally have been there. Makes me think maybe I shouldn't have been, and the universe had to correct it. I don't know, but it was definitely weird, and still freaks me out eight years later to think about it. This happened when I, a 23-year-old male, and my sister, 34, were 13 and 23 respectively. One Saturday morning, I woke up about 10-ish. My mum cooked me some breakfast, scotch pancakes, and we watched an episode of Lost together while my brother stayed upstairs playing on his PS3. Around 11.30am, my sister called me and asked if I wanted to meet her at my local shopping centre to buy some clothes, and just generally walk around and have something to eat. I wasn't doing anything, and my friends weren't playing out, so I decided to meet her. She took a taxi there, and I walked as it was pretty close to me, or it was at the time. We had a generally good time, didn't end up buying any clothes. My sister did and we had a meal at a cafe about 1pm and got ice cream each afterwards where you buy a cone and go and make it yourself from the machine although I broke the machine pin on the lever and got a bit upset because I thought I was going to be made to pay for this but the manager came over and said it's happened a few times, no biggie we went to Mr Sims, an old fashioned sweet shop and bought some sweets, weighed them up and paid for them. Going home, my sister ordered a taxi in, but this time, I got in. The taxi dropped me off at home, and she stayed in. She was living with her friend at the time. Generally, a good day. I played some FIFA with my brother when I got home. Ended up having a bit of an argument with him, then made up, had some supper in the evening, and watched Saturday Night Takeaway and your generic Saturday TV. All in all, a pretty normal, uneventful day. Except, this day didn't happen. At least, not to anyone but me and my sister. I mentioned me breaking the ice cream machine to my mum. She thought I was joking. I explained that at the cafe today, when we had food, I broke the pin on the lever. I'll never forget the way she looked at me. She looked worried, but slightly questioning, waiting for me to say I'm joking. She said I left the house once today, and it was to go to the chip shop to bring back egg fried rice and curry for me, my brother and mum, and it took about 15 minutes. At no point did I leave for hours, and when I did leave, it was about 2pm. I remember calling my sister, panicking at this point, 
and needing to prove that I did actually go and meet her. She answered, slightly sleepy at this point as it was about 11 p.m. before this conversation occurred and asked her what we did today on loudspeaker. She went through the exact same story I've told my mum, including the ice cream machine, including what she bought, and including what sweets we got from Mr. Sims. At this point, I ran up to my room and brought the remaining sweets down to prove that I bought these today and went to the shopping center. My mum at this point had tears in her eyes, hoping I guess that this was some prank me and my sister had conjured up. My sister and I agreed to talk about it tomorrow, but she texted me afterwards, asking me if mum's alright. I said yeah, and if she's not, neither is my brother, because he's promising me that all the time I was out, he was playing FIFA with me in his room. Tomorrow comes, and my sister calls me in a panic, claiming that her boss sent her home from work, because she got called in yesterday instead. She said that her boss called her yesterday morning and asked her to cover someone's shift, and she can have Sunday off, essentially just swapping a shift, which she agreed to. She said she didn't push him too much because... She didn't want him to think she was mental and lose her job. To this day, our mum, brother, and even my sister's now ex-roommate are wholeheartedly convinced that the day me and my sister spent together didn't happen. She no longer has contact with her old boss, but he paid her for the Saturday despite not working Sunday. And me and my sister can recall tiny details to each other about the day we had. Over the years, this has generally drifted into the background, but sometimes gets brought up now and again, and has become something almost taboo to talk about in our family, because of the issues it caused around the time. Let's begin with the fact that my mental health is very stable, and that I have been sober that day. This happened to me a few years ago, when I just started my first year of university. I woke up and realized I was too late for my morning class. A lot of people texted me, where are you? You are late for class. Will you come to uni today? I was like, whatever, I will go even though I am late. I got in my car and started driving. It's a 15 minute drive from my house to the university. Here's the part where it gets strange. While I was driving, I forgot where my university was and why I was going to my university. It was very vague, like I knew that I had to go to uni, but not exactly why and where it was. I somehow managed to arrive at my university. I got out of my car and checked my roster on my mobile phone. I noticed the classroom and walked towards it. My university is very small, so not so many classrooms. When I got there, the classroom was locked and I peeked through the window. There was nobody. I decided to text my classmates, but nobody answered, nor picked up the phone. What to do now? I decided to ask around where my class was. People who work for the university told me that there was no class that day, even though my online roster stated that there was class that day. I decided to check every classroom. There are not that many classrooms in this university. I checked every single one, all locked. I freaked out and started to call and text my classmates again. 30 minutes went by and nobody answered, nor picked up their phone again. I decided to drive back to my house. The next day, everything was normal. 
I went to class and nothing strange happened. I decided to ask my classmates about the day before. Why haven't you guys replied to my text messages or answered my phone calls? They didn't know what I was talking about. What about class yesterday? There was no class, right? They all looked at me with a very strange look and told me there was actually class, but I never appeared. I know for a fact that I woke up that day. It was no dream. I have the texts I remember sending to my classmates. There were no students at my university besides some people who worked that day and all the classrooms were locked. I was visiting a friend a while back in another country and stayed at his apartment during that time. His apartment was essentially an open kitchen living room going into a small open hallway. This hallway had three doors, one at the back and two on the right side. The door at the back led to the bathroom and the back right to his bedroom. Being a guest, and I'm not a person that snoops around in other people's stuff, I never got to look behind the third door. I just assumed it was like a small storage or broom closet. I stayed with him for two weeks and walked past that door many times, always slightly curious but never dared to open it. The only difference between this door and the others was that it had no hinges on the outside and would therefore open inwards, which was kind of weird considering the theoretical space behind it. It had a handle, keyhole, and even the same paint like the other two doors. On the last day, we went to a burger restaurant and my curiosity got the better of me. I ended up asking him what the room was for and he was super confused, claiming his apartment only had two doors in the hallway and not three. He has been living there for years and would have definitely noticed if there was a third door. I was just confused because I had seen that door and passed it, even stopped and looked at it for the past two weeks. When we returned from the restaurant so I could get my stuff and head to the airport, he made a joke about it again while entering the apartment. Looking at the place on the wall I had seen that door for the whole time I was there, I was greeted by a blank section of wall. The door was gone. Yeah, I think this may have been my first glitch in the matrix and I'm still really freaked out over it. So basically, I was in the kitchen getting something from the fridge, when my dad out of nowhere asks, hey, what did you drop? I'm confused because I didn't hear anything fall, so I ask him what he means. He says he definitely heard something fall, and asks me what it was. I'm still trying to figure out what he was talking about, when suddenly, a date pip goes flying off the kitchen counter right in front of me. I literally saw the full event unfold. It flew off the kitchen counter and landed on the ground right at my feet. I'm really weirded out by the whole situation. Not sure I can think up a reasonable explanation for how my dad randomly predicted something falling off the counter just to see it happen a few seconds after. So, just to clarify some things. Firstly, I was alone in the kitchen when this happened. Dad was in the living room, which is directly across from the kitchen. He was facing the other way watching TV. There was a box of dates, but they were on a separate shelf. It's an island kitchen, so there's one countertop shelf in the middle and the box of dates were on the outside shelves. Secondly, 
it was a single pit from a date, which randomly popped into existence. It wasn't on the counter before, because I wiped some crumbs off the countertop, and I would have knocked it off if it was there to begin with. Thirdly, when I say it popped into existence, I really do mean it. I saw it jump off the shelf, and I tracked its motion until it hit the floor. About a week ago, my best friend and I decided to take a quick girls trip to Glenwood Springs, Colorado, and stay at Hotel Colorado for a night. For those of you that don't know, Hotel Colorado is known to be one of the most haunted hotels in Colorado, and we were up for the possible scare. We checked in at about 3pm and dropped our bags in our room on the fourth floor. At this point, we weren't ready to start ghost hunting yet, so we just decided to walk around the hotel to get our bearings. The hotel is six floors and was built in 1893, so it has a beautiful layout and lots of interesting history. We decided to start up on the sixth floor, which is the penthouse. Since the hotel is old, the elevator took a good amount of time to move from floor to floor. So going from the 4th floor to the 6th floor took about 10 to 15 seconds. We toured around the penthouse and then decided to get back in the elevator to go to the 3rd floor, skipping the 4th floor since that was where we were staying. Keep in mind, we weren't in the mindset to be ghost hunting yet, so we weren't expecting anything weird to happen. We were just simply checking out the beautiful hotel. So we pressed the third floor button in the elevator. And with no exaggeration, two to three seconds later, the doors started opening. I thought to myself, wow, that was pretty fast to get us to the third floor. But as the doors completely opened, I saw a big L on the outside wall. We were at the lobby. It was a nice talkative older couple getting in the elevator. But my friend and I were so stunned that we could hardly talk to them. We exchanged looks with each other without saying any words. And that's when I got my confirmation that whatever just happened really did happen. My friend was pale in the face. It literally looked like she just saw a ghost. The button for the third floor was still lit up at this point and the doors closed and took us to the third floor in no shorter than 10 to 15 seconds. When we got off the elevator, we both tried to make sense of what just happened. The elevator didn't feel like it had dropped or even moved any faster than before. I have stayed at this hotel before too and the elevator has always moved slow. We weren't on our phones, mine was nearly dead in my pocket, and we weren't even having a conversation. There was no time for us to be distracted, no way the elevator malfunctioned, and no way we lost track of time to that extent. We decided to get back in the elevator, go to the sixth floor, and press three again. Ten to fifteen seconds later, we were back on the third floor. Back up to the sixth floor we went, trying to debunk what just happened. Pressed L for lobby, and about 30 seconds later, we were at the lobby. There was only one elevator, and it did not malfunction. We were not distracted, and it went from the sixth floor to the lobby in two to three seconds. We sat down after that, really trying to make sense of it. Even staying silent and paying attention to the time and floors we passed when we got in the elevator every time after. But nothing weird happened again or made sense. And still to this day, we have no explanations.
This morning, I drove out to go to work, the same street that I drive every single day. At the end of the road, on the right, there's a mosque, and today, it was especially busy, and there were cars trying to park, and on the left, there had been an accident. Someone drove through a fence of a house. The car was a four-wheel drive. It was charcoal in colour. And there was a police car, ambulance and fire truck. I went to message my boss, but thought I should wait until I drive past the police to pull out my phone and use Siri to text. I drove past the accident and then messaged my boss saying, sorry, I'm going to be late. I was stuck in traffic because someone drove through a fence of a house. I still have this text. When my husband came home from work tonight, I was telling him this, and he said, the mosque? That's been demolished for a while, and I looked at him like he was crazy. So I explained the scenario, and I said there is 100% a mosque still there. People were walking into it this morning, Anyway, he said, okay, jump in the car and you'll see there's no mosque. It was demolished. We drove up the road, and he was completely right. The mosque was demolished, and it's been demolished for a while, because there's a fresh concrete slab there. We later found out that they demolished it on April the 30th. Also, the house across the road from the mosque that had the car drive into the fence was completely undamaged, and the fence was even different. It was a more modern, colour-bond steel fence. The fence I saw was a low one made of red brick. I broke down into tears, and walked up to the temporary fence that surrounded the demolished worksite, and put my hand through, as if it was going to feel some sort of veil. We then went home, and I tried to do some research. On Google Maps Street View, you can see the fence was sitting on top of the pre-existing red brick, which was obviously from the previous fence that must have been there. This led me to believe that this morning's happenings were all from the past. We also tried to find out if there was ever an accident there, but I couldn't find anything on Google regarding an accident on that street or into that house's fence. Well... That's basically the story, and I don't know what to think. I should mention that I have driven down that same street every weekday for the past two weeks, and that mosque has been there every day. Currently at a bar, and really weirded out. I was supposed to go to karaoke tonight with a couple of friends, only to learn, once we got there, that karaoke doesn't start until next month. Everyone in our group was gung-ho karaoke and bailed as soon as they heard it wasn't happening. So I drove home. I live near a busy strip of restaurants and bars, and I'm also a dad to our brand new second baby. And full disclosure, this night out was really needed. So I was walking up and down the strip, looking for a place to get any little break in. Judge me all you want if you don't have kids. And one of the bars I've been to before was lights out, doors locked, closed. Kind of strange because Thirsty Thursday in our college town is typically a bumping night for them. I took a lap up the strip and back, just not feeling any other place so I gave up and decided to walk home. Passing the same bar on the way back, the bar is not only open, but full, with live music going and everything. I couldn't even go in, I was so weirded out. So I walked down an off street to the trashy dive bar, and I'm trying to figure out if I actually just experienced a glitch. I'm buzzed now, but I hadn't drank at all when this happened. A few years ago, me and my wife and kids went on a caravan holiday to Saltfleet in the UK. 
We used to like going there, and Saltfleet is nice. We love the campsite, and it's close to Mablethorpe. We had a lovely week away, and it was nice and sunny, and there was lots to do. After the week was up, we packed up our suitcases and started to drive back to our village in the Midlands. It is about a 90 mile drive. We have done it many times before. On the drive home, we started to need refreshments and the toilet. We happened upon a little chef. It was strange. We had never noticed this little chef restaurant on the same journey before. Also, I remember thinking how strange it was that there was a little chef still running. I thought they had all closed down quite a few years before. We parked the car, all approached the restaurant and went inside. Everything seemed off and it just felt strange. My family never seemed to notice anything strange. We sat down and started to look at the menu. It was a really weird atmosphere. I can't explain it, but I wasn't very keen on being there. We sat, we ordered our meals and drinks, and waited. Our order came to our table, and we ate it. I only had a Coke, as there was nothing else I fancied. When we were about done, my wife said she needed the toilet. I pointed where it was. Here's the strange bit. There must have been about 20-ish people sat in the restaurant. They all got up one by one and walked to the toilet doors and went in. And at this point, me and my family and the people behind the counter were the only folks left in there. My wife and kids never said anything. I didn't know if they had noticed. Bex got up and went to the toilet. She came back and sat down. I then proceeded to walk over to the toilet door. I opened it and walked in. As I walked through the next door, I opened it. There was nobody in there. The toilets were empty. I took a leak and I got out of there and rushed my family out the door to the car. Once we were back on the road, I asked my wife if she'd seen all the customers go in the toilet at the same time. She said she had, and we both couldn't understand where everybody had vanished to. There was only one door in and out of the restaurant, and we were sat right next to the entrance. Also, I looked round the toilets, and there were no other doors to get in or out of there. We went past that restaurant a bit later in that year, and it looked derelict and closed down. The thing is, in my life, I should have died four times. Twice, clinically dead from two ODs in the early 2000s. Smashed and exploded a train track explosive 30 centimeters away from my face in 1995. Then rolled my car on its roof, then back over and hit a wall at 60 miles per hour in 2009. I'm already worried that I've jumped dimensions four times. The only person that knows this is the girl I was with. I never talked about it because I felt insane at the time, and of course, I was young and dumb. Me and my girlfriend had been at a party, about 30 minutes from where we live. We were under the drinking age, 19 or 20. We had played a game of beer pong and were heading home as we didn't want to be out too late. It was around 11pm when we left. To be clear, we were not drunk. We played maybe one game and didn't drink it all. I wouldn't even say we were tipsy. My girlfriend was driving and I was in the passenger seat. We were not familiar with the area, so we were following street signs and coming up on the intersection, the light was green. 
there was hardly anyone out on the road, and there was no one at the time around us. I, all of a sudden, had this horrible feeling. It was this sick feeling, like something wasn't right. The kind of feeling that feels like it's swallowing you up. Some kind of instinct inside me made me scream stop at the top of my lungs. It wasn't really a choice, it just came out. She slammed on her brakes at the clearly green light, screaming back at me simultaneously, what the hell? As she was finishing her sentence, a giant dump truck barrels through the intersection at around 80 miles an hour, running the red light perpendicular to us. We just sat there at the intersection for like five minutes with our mouths open. We definitely would have been killed if she wouldn't have listened and I didn't scream stop. I didn't hear it. I definitely didn't see it. I have no idea what made me scream, but man, am I thankful. I was on my way back from work, and it was somewhere around 10pm. After a few traffic lights, I noticed a car getting a little swerve happy. I paid more attention to it because, as much as I hate being a snitch, I would feel guilty if someone got hurt or died from drunk driving. It was borderline 911 call worthy. It started to seem better, so I decided to pass them and get to work. When I get beside them, I noticed it was two young ladies, probably just having fun. I got in front of them as we were making our way up the Roosevelt Bridge that crosses the river. I watched them in my rearview mirror briefly, and they seemed fine enough to drive. When I got to the traffic lights at the bottom of the bridge, I looked in the mirror and didn't see them. So I turned to look. No sign of them. It is a river cross, so there is nowhere to turn off. I feared that they had crashed up on the bridge, so I right away did an illegal U-turn at the red light to go up the northbound side. I didn't see them on the southbound side, but there is a four foot or so concrete barrel between the north and southbound. So I get to the light at the other end and do another U-turn to be on the southbound side, same side they should be on. I don't see them. There is a concrete barrier and a sidewalk they would have had to gone through to fly into the river, but I knew that was unlikely. I got back to the traffic signal, finding it weird, but my mind was already trying to rationalize it. The lights turn green. I start to go when I see the same car with the two young ladies come down the bridge and take a left. I was kind of intrigued actually, and not freaked out as much as I should have been, because it wasn't proof I had just witnessed something glitch-like, but I should have been. I try to think of every possible way I missed something, but I can't think of any. I swear, after getting into glitch stories, it's been happening more. Or maybe, it has always happened, but we don't stay conscious of it. I don't know but it happened. I'll preface this by clarifying that I am by no means a spiritual person. And having said that, I have no way to describe what happened to us. Back in 2019, my girlfriend experienced a memory of a situation that had not happened yet. We were both in my bedroom, in my house, and she was on the sofa, trying to recall a funny remark I had made to her. She says that she was reading something funny to me a few days prior, to which I replied with a funny remark, and she was telling me this because she couldn't quite make out what I had said. I was confused, because I had no recollection of that convo. 
we dwelled on it for quite some time while she tried to remind me that I was by the bathroom door while she was laying down on the bed. But I had nothing. She eventually shrugged it off and forgot about it. Fast forward to a couple of days after, I had just showered and I was drying myself off by the bathroom door frame, which is inside my bedroom. She is laying on my bed, reading something funny on her cell phone, right in front of me. She starts reading it back to me with an excited look. As she is reading it, her excitement seems to slowly fade away. I take my cue and I start to make a funny remark about that story. But I stop halfway. I ask her what's wrong. She is pale, wide-eyed, looking at the phone screen. When suddenly it clicked, she looks back at me, jumps out of the bed, and finishes the sentence I had just started. She knew exactly what I was going to say. It was exactly the memory she had two days prior. We spent a few good hours after the incident freaking out, trying to wrap our heads around what had just happened. No possible explanation, no deja vu. She literally described that event days before it happened. I remember her mentioning specific sections of that story the day before. It wasn't a coincidence. A text that she read again by mistake. Nor could it be me, unconsciously playing a prank on her. It was really a memory of the future. She came over last night and I had her tell me the story again. She confirmed some things. The text she read was from a tattoo on a photo, on Instagram or Facebook most likely. She distinctly remembered bits of the text on the moment of the memory, as well as a certain movement I did, followed by something I said. However, at the moment she actually read the text back to me, she definitely had never seen that tattoo before. And then, as soon as she read it, she felt a weird sensation, as if the memory was rebuilding itself. When she looked at me, she said it felt like her memory and her sight sort of converged onto a single moment. That's when I asked her if she was okay. And she got out of bed. She repeated what I had just said before asking and completed with the punchline. But the remark had no impact at all. She said she had never felt so afraid before because the feeling was too strange to describe. I'm obviously very skeptic myself, so I confronted her about it, asking if it was possible that she just saw the same image twice. If it could have been a coincidence, or if she actually had just a very strong deja vu at the moment, and the memory wasn't actually related, she denied all of it. Said she was sure of the text when it first came to her mind and said she knew exactly what I was going to do and say. Her family has a history of dealing with supernatural stuff, and she has quite some memories about talking to angels with her aunts when she was young. She has also got told once, totally out of the blue, by a friend's mother, that she had medionic powers. The friend's mother was a medium as well, he might, after all, just be in a Jeremy Baramy. In 2016, I was working at this factory job where we weren't allowed to carry our phones with us. My usual time that I left was around 4, due to me having to go to college classes at 4.30. But on this day... An incident at work happened, where I had to stay over for about 30 minutes. So by the time that I'd gotten to my car, I saw that I had three missed calls from my girlfriend at the time, and fearing the worst, I immediately called her back. She picked up the phone immediately, and she asked me why I didn't acknowledge her 
when I was driving by her on my way to school. I was puzzled by this, because, well, for starters, I barely got into my car at work, and I hadn't even started the car yet. I asked her if she knew it was me for sure. She gave me a response as if I called her a liar, and she couldn't believe that I would ever say that. She continued to say that of course it was me, because I was driving down the street next to her in my very distinguishable car. A cutlass Oldsmobile. And of course, I myself am a very recognizable person, with my nerdy glasses, and the work clothes that I was in. When she told me this, I immediately sent her a photo of myself with my job in the background, and once she received it, she got really quiet, and she said in a very shocked, low tone, but I swore that it was you. I didn't know what to make of this, because even her little brother next to her said that it was me driving. She did mention that I was sitting down in a very unusual, stiff way, with my arms gripping onto the steering wheel very tightly, and also that I had a strange uncomfortable look on my face, and I looked white as if I was sick or scared half to death. A few days had passed, and I drove to work at 6am, my usual start time. The sun wasn't up yet, and everything was still dark. Well, once I clock into work, my two co-workers, who were friends, came up to me and said, Hey, what the heck was all that about earlier? I didn't know what was going on, and asked what they meant. Well, my friend said that when they got to work at 4.45, they parked their cars and got out. Then they saw me drive into the parking lot, in my recognizable car, and step out of it. Before either of them could say hi to me, I immediately ran from my car as if I was being chased by someone. They kept on calling my name, but I was already long gone, running down the alley of the other factories. The two of them were left clueless, and they continued walking to our building. This story left me breathless, as I didn't know what to even respond with, except saying, are you sure it was me? Because I barely left my house about 20 minutes ago, and I just got here to work right now. They both swore that it was me, and they said it in a very truthful tone. So, this happened about four years ago. I've been a piano player since the age of four, won multiple awards, and every day I strive to improve my playing practice of course. But this one day, I looked up at the clock to check my starting time, so I didn't overdo it. The time read 4.15pm, sometime around there. I played for about an hour, so because when I looked back up again, it was 5.15. I felt hungry, so I went downstairs to grab something to eat. When I arrived downstairs again, my mother asked me what was wrong. I told her nothing was the matter. And then she asked me why I stopped playing, so I explained that I had been playing for about an hour now, and I'm going to grab something to eat. She told me I haven't even been playing for five minutes. I turned around to the living room clock, and no, my eyes did not deceive me. It read 4.15, and so I ran upstairs to the original clock I used as a starting time. Also, 4.15. Time had gone back an hour, but I'm not sure if my mother had looped the thing she was doing, because I didn't pay attention when I went to practice. So I just told her I didn't feel too well, and didn't play piano for the rest of the day. I have never had any mental illnesses or disorders in my medical history. I was not feeling tired or sore that day, so I'm looking for anybody to come up with a plausible explanation for what the hell happened that day, because the event still baffles me 
until the present time. My boyfriend is a local historian and antique collector. I am not from the area and was always curious and attentive when he would teach me about certain items' origin, rarity, age, etc. that he was into. One day, we were at an auction house, viewing the antiques which was set to be auctioned off the coming weekend. He came across a tear-apart calendar, which had the first three months torn off, leaving the month of April exposed. It was an advertising calendar for a tag company that was made in the shape of a tag, which I thought was quite unique and never seen before. He said the company had advertised had been out of business and even though the first few months had been torn off, it was still quite valuable because they are very rare to find these days. We didn't attend the auction and he didn't buy it, but I made a mental note of it as I often do. A couple of months later, I was holiday shopping at a local bookstore with a friend. It had several antiques hanging on the walls and shelves. Lo and behold, I found another tag, tear apart calendar. It was the same item my boyfriend showed me. It was the same year and same company, except this calendar had all the months fully intact. I literally did a dance of joy and told my friend the significance of the item in excitement. I didn't care about the price. I had to buy it for my boyfriend. So Christmas Day comes around, and my boyfriend was very happy to receive his gift. I was even happier to give it to him, because I've never expected to find another one. I told him that our conversation about it that day was the reason I got it for him, because I saw the look in his eye that he liked it. After I said that, he looked at me and said, What conversation? And went on to say that the conversation never happened. I talked him through the conversation in its entirety about that calendar, along with the knowledge he shared about it with me. He said the information about the calendar was accurate, but that conversation never happened, and he's never come across one of those calendars in person. I thought he was joking, pulling my leg, but no, he was serious. He just kept looking at me like I'm crazy as I keep insisting that conversation was real. I remember it, clear as day. It's been five years since then, and we are married now. Every so often, I bring it up. He refuses to admit that conversation was real. I begged him to consider that he might have forgotten about it, and it would be okay to admit he just forgot. But he insists... He wouldn't forget something like that. He is seriously not the kind of man to gaslight me or play me as a fool either. He's just really not that kind. My memory of it is just as real as any other. And yet, I do believe my husband when he says it didn't happen. If that conversation never happened, then how did I get accurate knowledge of something I'd never seen? and had no idea it even existed. I'm not from around here, so it's not like it's something I would have known before. And what about my memory of that conversation? I have a memory of something which never occurred. I'm so confused, I still remember it all, vividly. We both have just chalked that whole conversation up as a glitch in the matrix. How else can it be explained? This happened over a year ago. I had my brother and sister-in-law over for dinner one night. My husband and I have a now two and a half year old daughter, and in this story, she had just turned one and was incredibly mobile, walking everywhere and getting into everything as one does when they're a toddler. Anyway, we live in a very old house, 
Our basement door goes down some very steep stairs, and they're sketchy, even to someone who's a grown-ass adult. Sometimes, the door sounds like it shuts, but doesn't fully, and this door is right around my refrigerator, so you can't see it unless you go around the fridge. Also, it's a basement garage situation. I park in there all the time. I had gotten groceries that day, and we had carried them up to the kitchen before my family had gotten there, and hadn't bothered with the door since. My sister-in-law and I were in the kitchen making dinner, and I swear to God that I saw my daughter run past me, around the fridge, and towards the door. She was wearing her white onesie, and was very quick. I immediately, with my cat-like mum reflexes, run the incredibly short distance in case the door wasn't fully shut. Even though I knew it was, you know, anxiety and stuff. My sister-in-law saw her too, and was behind me. She wasn't there. We both looked at each other like, what the hell did you see? We confirmed it was my daughter, and she was in the other room with my husband and brother, playing on the floor. We were both wigged out. I swore up and down, sideways and back to back it was her. So did my sister-in-law. We told the guys about it, and they were weirded out too. So, yeah, that's the time I think my daughter glitched. Sometimes we call her Vanellope from Wreck-It Ralph because she glitched. Last week, my 10-year-old son, B, got sick one night, vomiting, fever, etc. So the next morning, I kept him home from school. I accidentally forgot to call the attendance line and report him absent. About half an hour after school started that morning, my fiancé called me from work, freaking out, asking where B was. I informed him that he was home sick, which my fiancé didn't know, because he left super early that morning for work. Apparently, the school had been frantically calling me, but my phone never rang, and I had no missed calls. I then called my fiancé, because numerous students and teachers had seen B at breakfast, which is served before school starts. B is always there early for breakfast, but he was absent from class when school began. Many students swore that they had seen B at breakfast, but B was acting weird and didn't respond to them. Very odd, because B is very outgoing and social. It even escalated that some students had seen B running onto the stage in the auditorium and hiding teachers were literally using flashlights to search, even up in the stage rafters for him, because he had supposedly even been spotted up there. One of his best friends even called B from school that morning, because she was worried, and B's phone never rang. She even texted him, and you guessed it, no text was received. The police had even been notified and were en route to the school until my fiancé called me and I called the school immediately to inform them that B was home sick. I had tried to obtain more details about all of this but even the school secretary seemed weirded out about it and was just like, um, okay. Well, glad he's okay. Must have been another student that looks like him. From the info that I've gathered, nobody actually spoke to B that morning because he, quote, ignored us and just stared down at his food tray. When I asked about what he was wearing, all I got was hoodie and sweatpants, which is his usual everyday attire. Bottom line, this whole thing really freaked out me, his friends, and even his teachers.
I was 16 when this happened, and was with my cousin at a festival my town was having. The sun was setting, and the festival was coming to an end. Everyone was slowly leaving. Me and my cousin stuck around by the parking lot, eating mini donuts and people watching. I focused my eyes on this old man, who was walking to this portable bathroom thing they had there, which was split, male and female, and had three stalls on the inside, and even a sink. The old man went in, and I just kept watching the bathrooms, looking at people come in and out. But the old man never came out, and five or more minutes had gone by, which I thought was weird. I kept watching, waiting for the man to come out, but he never did. At one point, I even went up to the bathrooms, and when no one was around, I peeked into the male washrooms to check if the old man was there, but he wasn't. All three stalls were empty, and the bathrooms only had one way to get in, so this old man just disappeared in a porta potty. I even stayed back to watch the big truck hook the washrooms to the back and drive away. I laughed about it all, but still, it's weird, and I still can't think of a logical explanation. I'm a high school teacher. Several years ago, my husband and I took a weekend trip to San Antonio for one last getaway before the school year began. One evening, as we sat down at a Joe's Crab Shack, I noticed that a boy in a family we sat next to looked like one of my students from two years prior. I didn't want to stare long enough to be sure, though, that it was him. However, a while into the meal, I heard the young girl, who I assumed to be the sister, call this boy by the name of my student. It's not a common name. I turned quickly now to look at him, and they all looked at me curiously. Are you the Clarks? I asked. No, they replied. Oh, I'm sorry, I said. I just heard you say Kenny, and I taught at Kenny Clark two years ago. Oh, they cut in. This is Kenny Clark, the father said, pointing at the boy. He smiled quietly, as was characteristic of him. This is Kenny Clark, he said again, but we aren't the Clarks. He's been saying you look like his teacher, one of them, I can't remember which one, said. Well, guess what, I said smiling at Kenny. I'm teaching juniors this year, so I might get you again. He was still just smiling, and the sister now had him in a playful headlock. I hope we don't get any bad notes from home this year, the mother said. I told them that while I didn't remember Kenny being a problem himself, he had been in one of my most hyper classes, and I might have sent a few notes home to many of the boy's parents that year. We then reviewed how crazy the class had been, and the student nodded in agreement when I laughingly mentioned some names of his classmates. So that was that, and we said goodbye when they left. At the beginning of this year, I did end up with Kenny on my roster. On the first day of school, I mentioned seeing him on the river walk. He said nothing until I mentioned it again later, and this time, he said, that wasn't me. I questioned him, not just that day, but for several days because he stuck to his story. He had never been to the river walk that summer. He even swore to God, and he never swore to God, he said. I emailed his mum to make doubly sure, explaining that I knew it was a strange inquiry, but I had to put my mind to rest. She emailed me back and assured me that he was never in San Antonio that summer, and had been taking care of his little sister, while she, the mum, was at work the very evening I saw him. Also, 
she was white and had no husband, nor is there a male figure in Kenny's life at this time. The parents I saw on the river walk were black, and the only sister Kenny has is much younger than this girl on the river walk. So the mystery remains unsolved. Was it just a coincidence that there was another Kenny Clark, who looks just like my Kenny Clark, and who has a teacher that looks like me? Or did I cross into some parallel universe where Kenny Clark was in San Antonio with a couple that wasn't his parents? Or did Kenny unknowingly bilocate? He said he was supposed to have been in San Antonio that very week with a good friend, but didn't go. I'm afraid I may never know, but it's something to think about. In April of 2017, my band was on a road trip to Roswell, New Mexico of all places to play a gig and I believe it was somewhere in Missouri at night that we stopped at a rest stop. No idea exactly where we were, but I remember saying to my bandmates as we pulled into the lot that this place gives me a Twilight Zone vibe. It just had an eerie sort of presence to it and I like that kind of stuff, so it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. So I don't even know what the other two guys were up to. They may have just stayed in the car, but what I do know is that me and the bass player had to go inside for the toilet. This is just your normal setup of a parking lot, out in front of a rest stop, off of a highway. I don't smoke anymore, but back then I did. Me and the bassist decide to smoke a cigarette first before going inside to pee. He offers me one of his cigs and proceeds to call up his girlfriend to update her on how the trip is going. So I'm just standing there smoking and chilling and he's standing next to me smoking and on the phone. We are both out in front of the entrance to the rest stop and we're both facing outwards towards the parking lot with our backs to the entrance of the building. Suddenly, while still on the phone, the bassist starts casually walking back out towards the van in the parking lot. I see him walk away and his voice grows more distant. I don't recall exactly how far we parked, but there's only one lot and I remember just seeing him walk into the distance in front of me, still on the phone to his girlfriend. This confused me because I thought he had to go inside to use the toilet, but I didn't care and I was finishing my cigarette as this moment unfolded. So I just shrugged and put out my cigarette and immediately turned around to head inside the rest stop building. As soon as I get inside, it's completely empty, but you have to walk straight ahead down the hallway to get to the bathroom. I remember there was some sort of Route 66 clock that had a spiral shape or something directly above as you enter this hallway. It just, overall, had a Twilight Zone sort of vibe to it. I don't know how else to explain this experience. So I'm walking down the hall and I get into the bathroom and I hear someone in the stall who was talking on the phone. His voice sounds exactly like my bassist. No one else is in the bathroom. I can't see who's in there, but I'm standing at the urinal and laughing about how weird it is that this guy sounds so similar to my bandmate. But I know for a fact that it can't be him, as it would be physically impossible for him to have gotten into the bathroom before me when I literally just saw him head out towards the car in the parking lot about 20 to 30 seconds earlier at most. I even said to myself, now that would be ridiculous if it was somehow him. But even as I said that to myself, I knew for a fact that it wasn't him. Except that it was. Sure enough, a moment later, the stall door opens and out comes the bassist 
still on the phone with his girlfriend. I'm finishing up so he's behind me washing his hands. I turn around and I see him still on his phone and he's now walking out of the bathroom. I don't even think that he noticed me in there with him but at this moment I'm absolutely stunned and I'm left there in the bathroom by myself wondering what the hell just happened. I ended up telling him and everyone about this when I got back to the van, and he also explains that he went through a different series of strange events, but I can't remember the details of his side of the story anymore. All I know is that it was simply physically impossible that he could have been there in that bathroom before me, when I literally saw him walk out into the distance towards the van and I immediately headed inside to the bathroom. When I was 18, freshly graduated from high school, I was dating a guy who I'll call B. I lived with my parents still, and he had a full-time job. Now, we had only been dating for a month or two at this point, on this particular night, he and I had stayed out really late doing something, I don't remember what. It was like midnight or 1am. B was really tired and had to go to work at like 7am. So when he went to drop me off at my parents' house, I had him come in and sleep instead of driving the 45 or so minutes home. So we were sleeping upstairs and then right before his alarm went off, I woke him up and snuck him out of the house. He got in his car to drive to work and I went back upstairs to go to sleep. Not quite an hour later, I sat up out of a dead sleep knowing that B had fallen asleep at the wheel and I needed to start calling him to wake him up. He didn't answer and later that morning I got a call from his mother whom I had never met since we had only been dating for a short while. She informed me that he had been in an accident and flipped his car. So later that morning, I was meeting up with them in the hospital. B had been pretty badly injured and had a neck brace and the like. I don't remember the details, we were all just thankful he was alive. Fast forward I believe a week, and I was at his parents house, staying with them to help take care of B. He told me it felt like someone had grabbed him out of the car and set him on the ground. Then I told him that I knew about the accident before his mum had called me. I showed him the call log from my phone so he could see that I had indeed been calling him over and over we both got serious chills. He and I didn't stay together after this incident. We had been a really fresh relationship and this was too much for it. But I still think about how I got knowledge that I had no way of knowing.